Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back uh, to another week of Mantalk.ke. Thank you for always sticking with us. Thank you for sharing and thank you for following us on all our platforms. If by now you're not doing it, just rewind, pause, go down, subscribe, follow, because we need the numbers. We need to keep growing so we can spread more positive episodes just around around the, the, around internet, the world, the internet streets. Um, so... Uh, obviously, <sighs> we are in Kafisi on this different. We've not been on this couch before. We're on a different uh, location, um, but we're back on Riverside Drive. Uh, thank you, Kafisi, for giving us your knowledge room. Um, there's so many books in this room. It, the aesthetics are outstanding. Um, if you want to shoot it, if you want to use it as a boardroom, if you want to be a member for your company or for yourself, all the rates are going to be via the link down below. I encourage you to register. There's so, so many locations. There's new ones coming up as well uh, that you can use. So wherever you are in Nairobi, there's always going to be a Kafisi near you. So thank you, Kafisi, for having such amazing facilities and also helping us with our episodes as our location sponsor. So thank you. Guys, welcome back. I hope you're ready for this conversation. We did another one about uh, the men in our lives that have impacted us. So today, it's only right. There's two. There's two genders. Well, whoa, we can't, wait, say, we can't say that anymore. Wait, wait. There's two. There's 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 normally men and women <laughs> that you have relationships in your life. And today we're going to be talking about the women in our life that have impacted us in a positive way, that have helped us, and what we've learned from them. Because uh, I think it was lovely to give the guys their flowers, and I want to do the same. For yeah, ladies. for the ladies. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for yeah. the ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, as you can tell, I'm still vibing. Um, mm -hmm. We just played a really, really incredible mm -hmm. album on set, so I'm yeah. still. It was uh, Maxwell. Vibing. This woman's work. <laughs> this woman's work. So I'm still like, I'm still like Ooh, getting into the zone. Ooh. It's an episode I think will be very impactful for us. Very emotional. Um, yeah. I think um, well, the women in personally in my life have been a real inspiration, man. A real. Um, kind of shocking when we kind of taking stock before we rolled this I was thinking about like which women to big up and there's just so many man 100%, 100%. Uh, you know all those incredible the women mm. that raised us the women that kind of have sacrificed so much for us and then mm. there's also you know the women who are in our lives every day who kind of are our checking vetting system yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I think it's paramount to have uh, we always talk about FMS, Friendship Management System, but I think it's really important to have women that have different capacities in your life um, if you want to be a wholesome man. Exactly. Because to coexist, it means you have to interact with them and you need to have them across the board, from friendships to mentors to relationships to just like fun friends that you just have fun with, like going out, etc. So I think it's really key to yeah. have these kind of women. So I, I want to celebrate them today because also this platform is really championed by ladies. Before we even get into the ones that have impacted us. Yeah. Like the ladies Every that have been following us. Yeah, the mantle girls. Us. You guys really push for us. So we really appreciate you. All of you. First, that's, that's the first person, if you're on set right now, to appreciate. Obviously, Beryl as well. Yeah. But she knows that. She of course, knows Beryl. That. <laughs> she of course, that. Beryl. It wouldn't be possible. It wouldn't be possible Never without you. Made it. Yeah. Yeah, she's blushing. Um, ladies you. and gentlemen, we have achieved Zen. I she's the hardest you. woman to impress. On the planet, mm -hmm. episode mm -hmm. after episode, like, still. Barrel, how was it? Eh. We never get a smile. <laughs> <laughs> never a blessing. Oh, um, yeah, but so uh, shout out, out to, to the Queen of Rift Valley. Yes, yes, yes. The yes. VIP. Yes. The VV VIP yes. of our podcast. <laughs> She's going to edit this out. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to, Shout out to um, So, um, Oscar, do you want to kick us off? Because um, I feel like you're wearing a T-shirt, first of all. That hey. seems to shout out a lady that's been in your life. Yeah, man. I don't know who you want to start with, but um, yeah. Yeah. Number one. yeah. So, um, what I'm wearing is, uh, unfortunately, a funeral T-shirt um, mm -hmm. for my late grandmother. Her name was Phyllis Editombabu. Mm -hmm. um, a woman of great pride. Mm -hmm. um, a woman of great honor, great respect in her community. Mm -hmm. Um, who I think has impacted my life a lot through the way she's impacted my father and mm. my mother and my aunties and uncles and the entire family. She was mm. really, um, we lost my granddad 10 years ago. And mm. for that time, that 10 year time is when I really kind of understood who I am mm. between the years of 18 and 28. Mm. And she was like there all the time for the stories. Um, mm. I really kind of understood where I get, like our family gets our sense of humor mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and our, as you know, uh, no time for nonsense. <laughs> yeah, correct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so yeah. she she kind of instilled those values in, in us as a family and who we are mm. really comes boils down to who she was Yeah, and the pride yeah. she had. In fact, mm. uh, one of the most fun memories I have is uh, driving her from uh, Nairobi to Meru uh, in what kind of we all felt would be one of the last few times I'd spend with her. Mm -hmm. And it was crazy. Uh, <laughs> she One of the sweetest memories she has is that she was married. She was married in the day. Mm -hmm. In a Christian white wedding, 
Yeah. Whereas uh, other women from the village were not claimed by their husbands. Oh goodness. For her, she was like, I was claimed. Yeah. In that my your grandfather married me in the sun. Yeah. Um and like it was such a big moment for her. And sometimes I feel like um as men, I think like we should learn to kind of shine a light on these big moments, big mutual yeah. moments, because mm-hmm. she's been nothing but um a positive influence in my life and I want to recognize that as yeah. we show this episode, G. Oh, shout out to her. Shout out to yeah, her. Yeah. RIP, yeah. yeah. RIP, G. Yeah. RIP to my, my yeah. grandma. Ah, grandma. GM. <laughs> General <laughs> manager. <laughs> grandma. Yeah, uh, amazing. Man. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I think as well, those kind of valuable moments where you get to have conversations and you get to extract stories from like another generation are oh, crazy. They're beautiful. They're crazy. Because you never know until you have those moments. Crazy. And sometimes the car journey is the yeah. solitude you need, right? Because crazy. Yeah. So crazy. Yeah. even on my granddad's side, mm. uh, my grandmother on my, on my mom's side now, mm. like remember I, sa- I shared the story about me falling sick <clears throat> and her making me yeah. the ginger tea, mm. taking mm. care of me. Um, yeah. So when I was growing up, I, I said, when I was very, very young, I must have like six, I said, oh my God, Shoshone Simba, which in Kiswahili means my grandmother is a lion. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like that, she loved that. Like, mm, yeah. And yeah. like she said, yeah, like mm. I am a boss. And mm. like, I've had like really strong women in my life, man. Mm. Like even my mom, if we get into that, which we will, but like, yeah. I've been raised, like I have a heritage of very strong women in mm. who have raised me and given me the values that I have and mm. I really, really value that, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so shout amazing. out to my grandmas. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Again, I mentioned last episode I haven't had the privilege of having relationships with mine. Yeah. But yeah, wish I did, man. It sounds beautiful. Um so my first lady, mm-hmm. uh not only mentioned but in my life, uh, is definitely my mother. Hundred percent. Mum there we go. Mummy bear. Mama. Yeah. Huh? Um I don't even know where to start with her because like I feel like the person I am today is just such a direct result of the nurturing, uh, the love, the lessons and the conversations I have with her. Because as much as, yes, my father impacts me a lot to do with like work ethic, being a man. But in terms of now the emotional intelligence side, in terms of the appreciation for other women, in terms of perspective, in terms of getting out of dark places, mm. um, my mum has always been a refuge that I don't think anyone in life can ever um, match up to. Um, you, know you're no, you know when you know your number one champion, if you have anything that's gone right, the first person you want to tell uh, is your mom. So 100%, that's, that's the person in my life that I run to if something goes right, I run to if something goes wrong. And it's always like a, a calming. Like you go there, if it's good, you get settled. If it's bad, you get settled. And like that um, appreciation that everything is going to be okay just after the conversation is such a superpower that I can never sort of take away from her. Um, even, even she watches every episode of this, like every episode. And she's the one that will critique me. She knows me inside out. She knows me more than myself. She'll critique. I don't like how you're sat. You shouldn't wear, if I, <laughs> there's that pink shirt I wore. She was like, I don't like it. It doesn't look good with your skin tone. <laughs> like she's formed my love for appearance. I think I've given the story of like when I was younger and just watching the way she was always like put together. Um, and then now me, now when I was even like strapping my shoes, I told this story two, two, three times. That all came from just observing perfection uh, from her. Um, One of the things as well is I've understood the strength of a woman through watching her um, be my father's partner. So in terms of that that team, uh, in terms of leading from the back, I've seen and it's sort of given me now the standard that I sort of want for the lady that comes into my life. So... Um, for context, I've watched from her because growing up, she was always um, a housewife. So she support from like the home. And I remember at one point in her life, twice in her life, my father's um, ended up like in ICU, very sick. Right. Both of those moments, I've watched her boss up like just in an instant. And, and, so, and you don't you don't you don't realize that they have that capacity until they're forced to do that and step into that role and like lead the family like off, off the bat, like in one day. Dad, everything's dad's doing and the next day she's taken on everything so perfect example of her just bossing up is so my dad falls sick right and then the, obviously the, the hospital had to be a specialist in london my mom had never driven on the motorway in her life right and then in an instant it went from her always being the passenger driver to being like we're going to london i'm taking this massive four by four i've never driven on the motorway but i need to boss up right um it going from like oh this is what dad sort of takes care of in my life to her being like yeah i've got this everything's fine everything's organized and just being that like a shield from like what's going on 
in life. Like mm. they'll take it on, they'll be a sh- they'll be the shield, and then everything's okay because they're taking all of the the hits and they'll feed you the information you need so that you can get through it. So like that's what I've sort of seen the power of. And then as soon as this is the beautiful thing. Now as soon as my father gets better, she'll jump back into her role. Like she has the capacity to do that, but she'll jump back into her yeah. role. I remember at one point. Um, I hope she don't, doesn't mind me sharing this story, but. Um, Because of the, I'm never going to share all of the story to do with my dad's illness, but it got to a place where I think it was a week where they were signing off on buying a house. And then that's when my dad fell sick, but this still needed to go through, right? (laughs) So she literally, because, okay, so um, the kind of sickness that happened, it it now can affect, because of the the chemical imbalance that was happening, it can affect your cognitive abilities. So at one point, my dad, even though he'd taken this process to a certain level, Full sick, but we need to sign off on something. I remember her briefing her and being like, when you go there, this is what you do. This is what you say. So my dad is not cognitively there, but she's now just taken on everything. And he just sits there, sign here. Yep, it's done. It's done. And then that same week, having to now um, start a business, she, st- she started a business like where it was now house-based, um, looking after, um, caring for people. And just watching how quick she moved when it's a, a level of crisis. For me, like it's those things we were saying about our fathers where it's only until you see somebody do something that you realize this is, this is a boss and this is someone that can handle life. And that's that equilibrium, that stability, I think that's something you can, I can never take away from, mm. from my mother. Yeah, yeah, so shout out to Mumsy, man. You've taught me a lot. And she set the bar so high for the lady that'll be in my life now. So high, so high. So yeah, that's Mumsy, man. I can't talk about my mom. Yeah, you know my that mom. I had I had to try to circle because I was like, <sighs> if you go to certain places, this t-shirt. Uh, you know wet. my mom. I never like it. Yeah. I, it's if you want to get me crying. There, it's we, mom. Go. there I, we go. I can't. Yeah. So Oscar, yeah. um, <laughs> please tell us about your. I can't. About your mother. I cannot. You can. You uh, can, buddy. Honest and elevated. Be honest. Uh, you know the problem with me and my mom is I love her too much. Mm-hmm. Like it's talking about my mother is mm. the quickest way to tears. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a direct correlation. It's a direct, yeah. like, we and Craig, even with her, I can't talk to her too much because mm. I know I, I'll start crying like a baby. Yeah, yeah. You know, the thing is, I'm older now, so I understand kind of the things she's had to go through for the sake of me and my younger brother mm. and the stuff that she's kind of shielded us from mm. is now, like, blown on its head. So, like, mm. I can now see everything. Mm. And I always ask myself, like, how the hell did you manage? Yeah. I hate like, it. you know, like for me, it's like insane. Like a lot of the decisions she's made for the benefit of us as a family and for me and my younger brother mm. have always, like, we look like mm. princes mm. because of like the way she's shielded us. Yeah. My mom has always been a boss. It's not like, yeah. like yeah. from birth, like, yeah. you know, yeah, she yeah, was yeah. the firstborn daughter mm. and she is literally... If you want to see the relationship between my personality and a lot of the decisions I make, mm. it all boils down to the bringing my mother's given me. Mm. And I can't get too specific because tears will flow here, like mm. the river. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ila has seen it happen. I could not finish my graduation speech when yeah. I was told to talk about my mom. I can't because mm. she's literally... Mm. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, she's, Come on, buddy. she's literally mm. uh, everything. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. She. If I was asked to design a human being, I couldn't design a better human being. Beautiful. Yeah. I can't. She's the most virtuous person I know. She's mm. the one who's given the most. Mm. She's the one who continues to give even now when she's in a place where she is thinking mm. about her own self. Mm. She's the most selfless human being I know, and mm. her relationships are what enable me to enjoy the life I enjoy. Mm. Mm. Um. A lot of people wonder, okay, why did you study commercial law? Why did mm. you study financial law? Why not litigate? You're very good at public ski- speaking. Mm. But a lot of that is even because of the fact that my mom is a transactional lawyer. She's a mm. transaction advisor. Mm. Like, mm. I've, I grew up sitting in the offices where she was. Mm. Mm. You get what I mean? Mm. Where she was like a legal head. Yeah. So I always grew up going to say, oh, she's going to see, he's going to see Jane. Oh, he's mm. going to see this person. So mm. like I'd go in, into our office and just sit down and learn about mm. transactions and she mm. tell me about the economics of a country, mm. how her work impacts everything. Mm. And like, man, like I learned about the importance of finance and economics from my mother mm. and mm. from growing up among those books, like yeah. even growing up in the publishing house. So that's a decision mm. she made mm. to kind of give us a fuller life mm. um, from where she came from. Um, and that decision is what impacted my worldview. You mm. see, like every little decision my mother has made down from... Mm. 
Mm. Oh, yeah. I'm not gonna cry. Yeah. Down from um, mm. the school she chose mm. for me to go to nursery school, f- mm. to the going to boarding school and performing, mm. going to Alliance mm. for high school is a result of her relationship with someone else mm. um, who was her best friend at the time, mm. and her and her friend's son being at Alliance, and me mm. seeing that, mm. and then me joining law school. I never say this story, mm. but I'll, I'll I'll try and say it. Um, Um, I said in the last episode, me and Alex were supposed to go to the University of Nairobi, right? Mm. So um, one day after a night out, my mom insists you have to go and do this interview at Strathmore. Mm. So I ended up going to Strathmore and doing that interview. So it was a cognitive exam, right? Mm. So I did it and got the email like mm. to confirm um, that I had a place, right? Mm. Um, at that time, <clears throat> when I when I, it's even funny when I say it, When I got a place, um, I didn't follow up because I didn't care, mm. right? Mm. So I, me, I was focused on going to University of Nairobi. Mm. But my mom mm. said, wait, are people going to start? When are you going to university? No, no, no. So she kept pushing and she realized I just don't care. So she told me, enter this car. We're going to that school now. Mm. So I go to the school and Franceschi, who was the dean at the time, mm. <laughs> Franceschi is called by my mother because my mom, I've been calling this school. I've been trying to figure out how mm. I can get my son here. I'm very mm. excited. This is a fast pioneer class. My mom kind of saw the vision of the school, mm. of what it would mean, mm. saying that Strathmore is such a good school. And I think that if my son ends up at Strathmore, mm. then his life will change. Mm. Mm. So Franceschi is told by my mother, big boss, big lawyer woman says, I don't care if the class is full. I want to see the class. And she says, I will pay to mm. extend this desk. Mm. Okay, mm. I will mm. pay to extend this desk from here to here. Mm. So it does, doesn't take one student. It also mm. takes the second student who wasn't picked. Mm. So instead of your class having 62, let it have 65. Mm. Mm. Do you know I was given an admission letter? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. You think about that. Yeah. Ask my mom. Yeah. If there's one by event, means. Yeah. that's the first one. Second yeah. story. Mm. So South Sea, where I grew up, right? I never talked much about like the drugs relationship. Like... Mm the relationship between kind of the drug culture at the time I was growing up in South Sea and kind of that's the environment I grew up. So I, that's why I empathize a lot with like the Jay-Z music because mm. growing up, I also grew up in a hood where mm. a lot of young men and young boys were recruited to do mm. drugs, join the porn tourism industry. Mm. So an old man um, approached me when I was very young and like my mom had kind of instilled in me that this is not the safest neighborhood. Mm. And I kind of grew up in that environment of cocaine and heroin mm. and all these things. Mm. And my mom always told me, like, don't dare. So when I was older, it turns out that one of the reasons why, I'll get back to that story, but one of the reasons why, like, the recruiters never recruit, came to talk to me mm. is one, my mom, mm. uh, and one of the reasons why my mom sent me to boarding school, which mm. was also like, why, mm. was because my mom was very aware of the recruitment of young boys mm. into the drug business. Mm. And so she made sure I was away. Right. Yeah. From all of it. Yeah. And she made sure that the whole hood knows mm. that she's a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. So if anyone mm. yeah. <laughs> tries anything yeah. with her children, mm. she will come for you. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah. So like she kind of protected me from that mm. kind mm. of environment I grew up in. Yeah. And it was crazy, man. Mm. And like the day, I remember the day that guy came and told me, like this old man tried to recruit me. I'll forget. Told me, oh, by the way, we do, we have fun. You do watch, do you watch uh, movies? Yes. Uh, we have a lot of tourists. I want to recruit you so that, you know, you're a young boy, you can speak good English. Mm. You can go and recruit them. And obviously he means also drugs. Mm. Mm. I told my mom that story. Do you know we moved house in a year? Mm. Jeez. Yeah. In one year we were out of there. Mm. And mm. like... I've never thought about it, but when I'm older now, even me going and doing my master's, a lot of it has to do with my mm. mom and some mm. of the decisions she's made and the sacrifices she's made. Because in a lot of homes, one degree is enough. But yeah. for her, she's always said, you have to have a bigger worldview. Mm. Going to India, she financed that. Mm. Going to London, she financed mm. that before. Mm. Mm. Um, that time when I was um, a student and I needed to go, mm. the company told me, oh, by the way, um, For, to go to Cisco, unfortunately, because the internships have, interns have already been selected, mm. we're going to need you to kind of figure your way there. Mm. My mom's relationship with um, more other women I'll mention on this podcast. Um, her name is Lila, another incredible, inc- incredible lady. I mentioned her before as being the owner of Sasasema at the time, the publishing house. Mm. So Lila and my mom worked for me to go to London and mm. stay at a particular house that Lila had to call and mm. hear 
which house is this boy going to be staying in because my mm. mom is not going to just let you mm. have someone and the person who I ended up living with was Zarin yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and like yeah. so I, I will explain all these names mm. but like my mom's kind of love for me and my mm. brother is mm. what has put me exactly where I am today it mm. is not and the relationship is direct as direct yeah. as it can get yeah Mm. Her insistence on me to finish law school. I, I had a banging podcast. Mm. Finished, I, I have a mm. job. I'm working really well. My mom was like, nah, I finish law school. I don't mm. care what you have to tell me. Mm. And now the benefits are, you're starting mm. to see. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, she's always like, yo man, like I yeah. can't even, I'm shocked yeah. about crying, boiling out here. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 My mom, even the assertiveness, even mm. the fact that like no one should tell you nonsense. My mom mm. was like, yo, if they're bullies, mm. uh, if you can't if the school can't deal with them and you can't deal with them, you deal with them mm, yeah that was my mom you yeah. deal with your big boy yeah. Allah, i can't be coming mm. here you deal with them yeah my yeah. mom and dad put that in me mm. like you mm. even you you're not a joke don't yeah. deal with the situation yeah. so yeah. like um mm. yeah I, I owe i owe mom a lot man yeah. i am and i'm shocked i'm not crying here but like yeah 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 that's beautiful man that's beautiful yeah. and I, I definitely see the again meeting her for the first time I do see the parallels again. Yeah. You even look very similar. <laughs> you actually, yeah, you look very similar. Hey, my you mom, very yeah. similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. So the next, the next um, person, mm. uh, you'll enjoy this one. Next person in my life that's a lady that's impacted me um, is 100% uh, Rebecca. <laughs> yeah. This young lady, uh, the ladies in my house, <laughs> I tell you what, we have yeah. the most... <laughs> <laughs> we have the most fun. We, yeah, she's crazy. We've taken trips with just me uh, and my mom and my sister, and we yeah. we have an absolute ball. Um, she's like my brother, my best friend as well uh, in the whole world. Remember, my brother, my sister. Um, so, Rebecca, uh, <laughs> she's the one that challenges and pushes me relentlessly. She's the one that will check me like I can never BS. She will check me off the bat. Right, she's also the person that would also affirm me. Um, she's the person that I no one else can make me laugh as much as my sister can make me laugh. Um, she's the person that, as much as she, uh, and I can't believe I'm actually saying this out loud, as much as she, um, she shows care not through what she says again, but what she does. Um, and she's she's such a, a you know, such an emotive person that she doesn't like to display it too much. But you'll see it if something goes wrong, you'll see, you'll start to see it sort of come out. So also what, one thing I've realized as well is running a, running a business with her. Um, she's my younger sister, yes. But in some respects, like, she's, we are equals when it comes to approaching things. So as much as yes, I'll play the role of big brother, but sometimes she plays the role of big sister to me um elijah she, yeah exactly like she will she will check don't you think that was a bit crazy she'll check my <laughs> ego and she, yeah she will be like you're not charging enough and she's the one, one person that understands everything i do yeah um because we're both both in very similar lines yeah. and so i don't think anything anything i've done in kenya that's digital my sister has played a part has. in growing my platform in growing this platform in growing the business i'm doing um so yeah i i owe her <laughs> so so much another thing she's also taught me is again how to uh interact with women uh, uh, <laughs> i never tell her everything but she'll if <laughs> just through i i think living in the same house as her being my room is here her room is there right uh her being like my best friend i know everything going on so when it comes to I hope she doesn't mind me saying this when it comes to a lady's time of the month right she has taught me exactly how to navigate that. When a lady ha- is going through a downtime or when a lady needs you to just listen to them, she's taught me the art of listening when a lady is speaking. She's taught me the art of what you can and can't say. Um, she checks my masculinity if I say anything off. No. Yeah. Like, no, you can't say that. So just being able... And she set me up again, similar to my mother, in how exactly I want to be... Uh, treating now the woman in my life because I feel like sometimes if you don't have that kind of mm. connection with somebody yeah. you start learning about a woman with the person that you're gonna that's gonna be your partner but I feel like I've been given so many lessons not even by her just speaking by watching the appreciation for some actions when I do them so say if again it's like you know and she's going through her lady issues knowing that by giving her patience and time how much that means to her even without her saying, right? If it comes to her wanting to come and express herself, 
being able to shut up and just listen for an hour and a half about her problems, like that's a skill that has taken sort of work. But and again, it's not saying it's say, for example, something's going wrong at school, right? And she'll come and say, this person did this, this back in the day. This person did this, this, this. Before she's finished, I'll jump in and be like, okay, but what I think, and she's like, I haven't, I haven't expressed myself yet. Um, stuff like that has been such valuable lessons that I don't think I could get from anyone else because no one else can be that honest with you. Um, no one else can show you and check you when it comes to chivalry, when it comes to, um, for once in my life, being a protector. Like this is the first person mm. in my life that I have to protect, the first person that if they need something, because I'm a big brother now, first person that if she needs something, I don't care if I can, if I can't do it, it will be done. Like that kind of, that kind of love and passion for that person is something that is such a blessing to be able to exercise prior to a long-term relationship so yeah my sister yeah one of my best friends in the world yeah and, shout uh, out she's, to Rex. Uh, she is though yeah she is, she's proper she's vibes you should see the phone calls guys it's so cute hilarious that's nah, hilarious it's, cute. Yeah, it's very pumpkin. cute and yeah. if you don't think that this man is an eligible boyfriend trust me after i've seen those phone calls i'm like <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and again very... this is a problem because the standard just uh, keeps, the standard keeps is quite going, high keeps going up yeah, yeah. it's quite high she's quite uh, mm. a becky is very even for man talk as a team we miss a lot um yeah yeah she really adds value in every room mm. she walks in so shout out to you becky her work ethic is actually much higher than mine i've realized this running a business with her like the organization the work ethic like she's and there's something my my mentor told me and i think i said this to you the other day about um ladies are attracted to progression right so progression will Come get on. you further in the relationship them. than love and i was like that is so that is fact so number one when you're trying to attract a lady they're naturally going to be attracted to somebody that is progressing mm-hmm. even if it's one percent you talked yeah. about the one percent getting better so with my sister if I'm not progressing, she's the first person that will tell me. She was like, can you charge how much you've done this? She'd be like, okay, end of the month, we'll talk about like, oh, what have you done this month? What campaigns have you done? How much money have you made? And she's never satisfied. So she's the one person that's pushed me showing that women in your life, they need to yeah. see progression. If it's your mum, if it's nice. your sister, they need to see progression. Otherwise she'd say, nah, you're not doing enough. And I might be happy with myself. She's like, no, yeah, that's not that's enough. For sure. So that's something I've, I've taught, uh, like yeah. 1% progression every single time. That's mom for yeah. My mum is never impressed. Never, <laughs> never, <laughs> never, never. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, let's talk about, I don't, I, I don't think I want to talk about my sisters first. Yeah. I want to talk about the triumvirate, the triumvirate, uh-huh, the, uh-huh. the triumvirate of moms I have. So, yeah. I, I always say I grew up in a publishing house. The owner of that publishing house a lady, is a lady by the name of Lila Luce, um, mm-hmm. who also heard about this, apparently, when we shot the episode about me and kind of where I grew up. Mm-hmm. And Lila mm-hmm. is a second mom, mm-hmm. right? Because she's American, first of all, mm-hmm. and she used to be a philosopher. So she mm-hmm. used to be a doc- she has a doctorate in philosophy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So she's all about the questions of life. <laughs> ah. Yeah. 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 Um, and also, like, she travels a lot and she speaks very good French. And her mm. impact on me and my younger brother's life has been mm. incredible. Mm. So, a lot of my worldview, yeah. in terms of my understanding of kind of American history, film, mm-hmm. um, my interest in production, movies, mm. comes from her. Like, yeah. she's the one who kind of taught me about life outside of Kenya. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right yeah. and she invested a lot into who i am today as well in ways that even i don't know you know mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. you, you might think that it's mm-hmm. just vibes but mm-hmm. in many ways she's probably invested mm-hmm. in the relationship and in mm-hmm. my development but in ways mm-hmm. that even i can't kind of understand and i'm very thankful that i get a direct line to mm-hmm. a resource like her yeah. because this is someone who not only understands life but mm. also understands like the places i want to go yeah you know yeah. someone who's been in those rooms who's mm. kind of lived that lifestyle that you, you want to yeah. live right um and she's like one story i'll say is when i was in london when i went there mm. she so she has this thing where she travels with her daughter mm. um just to show her the world also to kind of expand her worldview Mm. And she made sure to stop by London mm. at the time I was in London mm-hmm. just to make sure. Yeah, the uh, this guy is not like we're yeah. not getting mugged off here. Yeah. So yeah. she goes into the house. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, I will say hi. Yeah, I've just come to see my son. Uh, mm. How is he doing? And like, like it's incredible. And yeah. I'll probably see her again mm. um, when we're shooting this uh, yeah. when I go to London because she mm. said she's definitely coming to see where I'm staying. Nice. Like, yeah. yeah. And you see, having someone like that in my life as a woman was also, and she doesn't take nonsense also, mm. like zero nonsense. Like, yeah. Yeah. whenever I try to, um, for lack of a word, bullshit, mm. she'll just go, 
Mm. Nah, yeah. that's nonsense. That's yeah. just you're telling me nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and she's she's a very interesting human being. Mm. Very different. Mm. Um, very yeah. charitable. Very giving. Very mm. knowledgeable. Yeah. And then there's Zareen. Now, mm. um, when I went to the UK at 21, at that time, I w- was living in this Pakistani household mm. um, with this incredible host, and her name is Zareen Keaton, who I will be seeing when mm. I go back to England. We promised we will not cry. Mm. And I will not cry on this episode. I'm very close. Mm. Right? Mm. This is where. Yeah. And Zareen is has been. It's like when we first met. It's like two people who were meant to meet, mm. and that mother son relationship just mm. clicked, man. Mm. And your like one of the lessons she taught me. Never forget this. Um, so there was a time because she noticed like I really work. Like she was like, this boy is very disciplined. By eight, I'm out of the house. Nah, nah. Mm, mm. And it's not uh, because and because like it was a different country and I knew what I've gone there to do. Mm. So like I, I was very disciplined and she was like, she kind of spoke on that. So she put me in different social c- scenarios to mm. kind of see what my reactions would be. Mm. And one of those social scenarios was she took me to Edgeware Road. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, we were having a debate about the difference between wealth and class. Mm. So she takes me to Edgeware Road. Um, I don't know if I've told you this story before. Season one. Yeah. Season one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So she takes me to yeah, Edgeware mm. and she's like, look at how these people are living mm. and like, you know, like Ferraris, big mm. cars, da da. Mm. But the road is just like really mm. like there's a, there's no clean up, there's no one like mm. people are not throwing things in the middle, so it's a very dirty road, but you're seeing mm. really, really big cars. Mm-hmm. Sitting down hearing about conversations, everyone's talking about buying Gucci, Harrods, Versace, mm. da da. Mm. And it was just an obnoxious conversation. In fact, someone saw us walking together and made the assumption that, you know, there's something going on mm. and said mm. it in Arabic. But then mm. I understand a little bit mm. because of Kiswahili. Mm. I was like, yeah, that's crazy. And she she understands Arabic. So she was mm. telling me, mm. yeah, I'm not even comfortable being here. But mm. I just wanted you to see, mm. kind mm. of. So we go to the toilets, they're dirty. It's just crazy. Mm. Mm. And then she's like, I'll take you to a place where the income is mm. similar. And mm. I want you to see the difference. And we go to Knightsbridge. Mm. And... Mm. Uh, we go there and then she said she's like it was at a, it's at a tea shop and I'm sitting down and I'm just listening to what people mm. she's like just open your ears don't mm. l- just listen to what people are talking about because it's in mm. English you'll understand yeah, yeah. and these guys are talking about like building bridges in Africa mm. donating to charities mm. starting their own businesses the child mm. is figuring out a way mm. to kind of add more value to life and she was like do you notice the difference in the conversations and mm. she said that's a difference between wealth and class mm. like somebody who's wealthy or mm. is just rich will just use that wealth to, yeah. you know, yeah. just like yeah. feel good about themselves. But like, mm. if you're wealthy and you still have class around you, mm. you're able to understand that wealth is a privilege. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I understood that, like mm. that lesson has stuck with me for life. Yeah. Yeah, and mm. with Lila, the lessons that Lila has taught me is exactly that because Lila is, you know, mm. in similar circumstances because mm. what she got out of her life, she's shared with us as, her adopted mm. sons and like yeah. we've kind of learned more about life mm. and these three women my mom Lila and Zareen um, have all poured into me and even mm. like Zareen in terms of when I was going through my my episodes mm. Zareen was the one who was talking to me the most about this mm. is life Oscar you have to mm. learn difficulty you yeah. have to learn that this is this how you get out of this experience is going to determine the man you are mm. and it's insane yeah yeah, yeah. It's that, there's you can't put a price on exposure. You can never put a price on exposure. Yeah. And the fact that that's like someone that really loves you that takes time out. There's no benefit to them. Yeah. Just to let you see. And I'm seeing and, her again. Yeah. I don't know yeah, if by the time yeah. we see this episode, I'll see her again after like seven years. So yeah. like we we've promised we will not cry, but mm. yeah, man, it's gonna be very emotional. Yeah. 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 No, that's a sense. That's a sense. Yeah. That just because sometimes people can sit you down and give you a lecture or tell you, but to show you is is another level. It's not. I think one of the most valuable things yeah. you can do. Um, shout out to, hopefully I'll meet you when I come see you, man. Hopefully yeah, I'll meet you. Because I've heard a lot about Zareen, yeah. Um, next, uh, next lady. Uh, I think it's been my final one because of time. Uh, unexpected, this one. It's going to be unexpected. But it's actually my ex-girlfriend. My ex-girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one of my best friends in the world. No, nah, nah, buddy. Listen, listen, listen. Hey. Why is everyone? Hey, first of all, everyone on the set. Needs to, everyone on the set needs to calm down. Well, everyone on the set needs to calm uh, down. This explains a lot. Uh-huh. Someone, please nah, continue. No, please, no, no, no. So, I think she watches this occasionally. But genuinely, I feel like people come into your life to teach you things, um, <laughs> and no matter uh, how, when, when maybe when you're first interacting, you assume that it's supposed to be for one thing. 
But when you now look in hindsight, you're like, that played a key role for a certain period of time. That's why I always respect and speak highly of her. So one thing I learned <laughs> was how to um, accommodate a lady in my life and how to show love and how to look after and and express emotions to a person that's not my mother and my sister. So um, this was also, also I think this, this uh, my ex-girlfriend also got me out of a kind of toxic phase in my life and made me mature faster than I ever matured. And it's very much a direct relationship to who I am now. It's that formative time, I was, time we spent together from me going from boy to a man. She was a massive part of that. Um, so for example, I learned, <laughs> I learned again the skill of trying to understand what this person is really telling you, right? Because I feel like sometimes uh, as men, when you're having a conversation, you can directly listen to what they're saying and think that's exactly what this person means. But there's so many different iterations of yeah, what that person's yeah, saying. Yeah, okay, I know what you mean. Yeah, like I that person might mean. be telling you this, or that must, this person might be looking like they're upset about this one thing, but actually it's to do with the whole picture of how this dynamic is, right? So learning to like listen to more than words um, and act accordingly is something that's really helped me, um, that, she, that she taught me. Uh, also just the capacity to say things from an emotional place. Because I feel like sometimes growing up with your with women in your life that are part of your family, you don't really need to say, it's like unread. It's, it's, it's like, um, sorry, unwritten uh, law that, yes, of course I love you. Like, ah, you can say, ah, uh, end of every phone call with my mother. Yeah, I love you. Or with my sister, ah, love you, but we don't really say it. Um, so like, that's okay, because you know. But now to be able to Oof. tell somebody <laughs> how you feel about them, <laughs> to tell somebody how you feel about them that's outside of your family, <laughs> it's a skill. <laughs> that kind of be able to express emotions it takes a long time sometimes for, for guys and yeah. that's something that I learned through, I wouldn't say mirroring, but being like, oh, okay, it's okay to go to this place. It's okay to express mm -hmm. um, how you're feeling using words. Uh -huh. Like using words. Well, I don't know why you're smiling so much, buddy. I don't know why you're smiling so much. Because she's um, going to watch this episode. No, she, yeah, of course. Yeah, she knows. We talk all the time. She knows. Yeah. She knows. She's a really, really paramount um, person in my life. The other, the final thing I think that she taught me is I think as guys... Um, we don't realize that we actually have the capacity to be loved by somebody outside of mm -hmm. like the women in your life that are family. So I think it was, it's a very strange thing to be like, this person likes everything about me. Yeah. Like it's, it's a very, it's a very weird thing. You have to sort of gradually understand like, yeah. oh, I'm, I didn't expect that what I do here to be appreciated in a certain way. So knowing that I have the capacity to, to be loved and show love is something that I learned from her and I think it's something I'll take into my, my next relationship, of yeah. course. And even after, you know, things ended, um, to curate a friendship where we can analyze and talk about, you do this, by the way, you do this, and understanding traits to about myself. To keep each other in 100%, lives, yeah, yeah. Hard yeah. to be like, oh, by the way, you normally do this and next time. Like, she's very excited for the next person in my life because there's lessons that we talked about um, after that I, they're invaluable because only a certain person can tell you how you act in a loving situation. So for me, I don't, hey, buddy, it's, it's facts, man. So I'll be forever indebted to, uh, to that to young lady. girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a woman. Lovely Like woman. for her to even get a shout out here in this nah, moment. Yeah, I'll always hold her in the highest regard. Yeah, yeah. outstanding individual. Outstanding individual. My ex-girlfriend. No. Huh? No, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm not going to talk about that. Sorry. Ah, <laughs> goodness yeah, me. But it's all love. She yeah. knows. She knows. It's all yeah. love. It's all love. Yeah. Even I learned basically about, I, I, and I remember one of the final days, um, mm. I said, You've definitely turned this boy into a man. Yeah, no, I have no yeah. doubt because I feel like that's what love. When the truest form, mm. yeah, you because yeah. mm. you have to, yeah, you have mm. to grow up. It'll, it'll make you grow up. It'll make you mature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think ex girlfriends definitely play a huge plural. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> huge, huge role. <laughs> My, uh, have one. Yeah, yeah. We know, but like every relationship, I think mm. as a guy, as a guy, I think like every relationship comes its own lessons, and mm. the objective thing is. Uh, don't carry it in your chest. These things, it's air. Just mm. breathe yeah, in and out. Take the it, extract the lessons. Extract, yeah, don't carry it take in your the, chest. Take the, take, take the lessons. Yeah. Uh, and if you do need to go to therapy, please, <laughs> after. Mm. Go. I, did, I did not. Uh, yeah. I did not, but... Yeah, yeah. but like, yeah. I think for me it was, um, if I was to talk about an ex-girlfriend, -girl, ex I think the one relationship, the thing that you taught me a lot was mm. 
um, evolve. Mm. That yeah. was the lesson. Yeah. That was definitely, that just like, yeah. take the experience, mm. take everything in. Mm. Don't look at it too negatively. Separate mm. yourself and mm. appreciate the person for even having the time and spending that time with you because it's yeah. not easy because you can assume that even you, you're easy to be with but the truth about it is nothing kind of shows you who you are better than how you behaved in a relationship and nothing mm. shows you that capacity for love mm. more than a relationship and I feel 100%. like I feel like ex, an ex-girlfriend can definitely yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and I feel like everyone should appreciate the role that person plays like yeah. even if it ends in whatever way like the fact you spent that time together, there was a reason you were attracted to each other. There's yeah. a reason you spent that time. So and extract that. Extract don't, the lessons. Don't yeah. focus on the last two weeks where yeah, you're fighting. Yeah, Guys, yeah, come yeah. on. Take the, take the six months. Take, take the, six, the year. Yeah, it was nice. It was yeah, nice. exactly. Yeah. 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 Shout out to ex-girlfriends. Respect your exes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another person I'd like to recognize, I think, in this moment is the women I've worked under. Mm-hmm. Um, for a huge percentage of my career, mm. I've really worked under women mm. bosses. Mm. Um from my time at ESET, uh, mm. my time at Cisco, uh, mm. my time at Triple O also. I've mm. worked around really incredible um, mm. women partners and women um, in high places, CEOs and leaders. And I think that that's really shaped a lot um, around my conduct in the office mm. and a lot around my conduct in terms of life. Mm. Mm. Uh, because I've kind of had the experience of seeing women in um, high, um, high pressure jobs kind of succeed and I've seen kind of the stereotypes around women can't be in high pressure jobs and have mm. families because my mom is that mm. but also um, these women are also like living that role mm. where they're delivering at a high level in terms of their work but they're also able to stand in as sta- mm. um, stable wives and stable mothers mm. Mm. Um, and having that kind of experience very young kind of really took away all of the nonsense I tend to hear online about mm. like women are like this and women are like that and I'm mm. like nah be mm. not really Sometimes mm. there's some things that are true, but not all the time. And mm. and just having that experience of learning under these people about how to treat people. Because if you learn, want to learn about investing in people in a business, whether mm. it's your customers, your suppliers, um, your own team, is learn from women. Mm. Women are really good at that and mm. maintaining relationships and kind of following up on client relationships and personal relationships within mm. their kind of business ecosystem. And I learned that a lot um, from women and yeah. from kind of what they do mm. and how they work. Um, mm. Whereas with uh, men, I've kind of learned the hard execution skills, like don't miss bloody deadlines. And mm. if you commit to a timeline, stick to it. And if you can't stick to it, communicate prior. Yeah. Um, with women, it's been more of understand why someone is making a purchasing decision. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah. Like what's about their life um, makes them make the decisions that they make. And I remember, again, um, one of the projects that I worked on under a very, very interesting, um, during my time at ESET, so we had a, the CEO at the time was a woman and I was working directly under her. And one of the things she kind of taught me was um, in any kind of business vertical, there's certain personality types who look at your product and get a reaction to your product. Mm. Um, and that time we were pushing cybersecurity. And I remember like the amount of detail that she'd go into, into Mm. who's making the purchasing decision, Mm. why are they making a purchasing decision, what part of their personality are we trying to appeal to, Mm. um, how do we boost sales in our company through, like, interpersonal relationships. Mm. Uh, Man, that's an invaluable skill because that's Mm. exactly what we do here. Mm. We, on Mantalk, we create content that creates a relationship between us and the viewers and we have mm. to be conscious of that mm. and conscious of who the, uh, that audience member is and that comes from a lot of working with a lot of women in the mm. law firm same thing mm. um not only are women execution oriented but they're also kind of people mm. oriented mm. focused on their own uh, people's well-being and when i learned i've learned i learned i've learned a lot um from those experiences from um the women partners that i've worked with um mm. previously mm. to the directors um to even my clients who were women um mm. and the phone calls and how we kind of try and come at a sol- come up at a problem and come up with solutions um mm. even team members who are women mm. each and every one of these people has have kind of poured into my cup and mm. i'm really really kind of grateful for that yeah 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 outstanding outstanding yeah yeah i think working with women is something that 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 collaboration is really key to learn how yeah. different genders attach uh, or approach different solutions, different problems, and like different consumers. So yeah, very key. Exactly. Um, because of time, I think I'm not going to be able to do my last one. But what I will do is just shout out, like I said at the beginning, the ladies that do watch Man Talk, the ladies that champion us. 
uh, the people that come on the live every week, uh, the people that send us DMs, the people that share. A lot of you are women, because uh, I know us are men, you're more silent listeners, so I really appreciate the Man Talk community, that ladies. Um, and again, like we said, the Man episode, I want to take the opportunity to recognise that we need to be telling these people and giving them their flowers while they're here. So just from these episodes that we've done on appreciating people, I think I've actually realised how much I need to say to people. Yeah. I've realised how much I need to say. So I encourage everyone watching as well. The women in your life, tell them. Uh, start with the women, maybe. It might be easier. Start with the women and tell them. This girlfriend on a podcast. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I will not she knows how much I love her. She knows how much I love that's that will not happen. That's what this, is that making you the final lady to bed? Of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> so yeah, tell the women in your life, tell the men in your life, like give them their flowers before it's too late. Um, so yeah, those are the women in my life. We love this you very guy. much. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. <laughs> totally. Half totally. as much. Shocked. As shocking. We enjoyed man. making it. Shocking. Do you know why? It's shocking. Because we had a <laughs> shocking. ball. Shocking. We had a Absolutely ball. Absolutely Respect shocking. your ex. Respect your mom. Respect your sister. Respect your mom. He respects his ex. It's a good day. Of course I do. Of course I do. <laughs> and I never, I'll never stop. I'll never stop. Yeah, right. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. Another week. Another episode. We really hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next week on mantalk.ke. Peace.